Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? Brain Smasher, back at you once again with another lame ass, lazy collection update. Cause I got nothing better going on. <clears throat> Let's get into this. Um, working on a new series. And uh, so that's been kind of a hang up. It seems like it's been a long time, but I swear it's only been a week. Um, I don't know. I, it seems like it's been longer in my head, but whatever. Based on the pile of shit that I've gotten in in the last week, uh, it, it should have been longer than a week, but whatever. So this is stuff that I've gotten in the last week. Some killer stuff. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, we're listening to, let me dust this off. I just hopped off the live stream of Marvel Mills, Sir Meat Wad, my buddy. Uh, and he was playing eight bells in the background and it just kind of made me think like what would that sound like what 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 would be comparable to that in my collection I'll tell you what the hardest thing about shooting a new video is deciding what to pick and I swear to God more and more as I come down here and pick something to listen to if I don't already have something in my head and I look at my collection and, and I just am crushed under the weight of my fucking collection and I can never decide what to listen to. But, um, so this was what I came up with. Velnius and the album Sovereign Nocturnal. Uh, this was released on God is Myth uh, back in, uh, I'm gonna take a stab, 2011 maybe. Um, my buddy Todd put this out, God is Myth. Um, and I was always really shocked that not more people were fans of this band. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I decided on this because I just saw that Eternal Warf Warfare Festival, which is going on I think in the spring or summer out in Portland, Oregon, uh, is going to be featuring the return of Velnius. And it reminded me, this is a really, really good album. It reminded I always said that this was like... If you took Wolves in the Throne Room, Two Hunters era, and crossed it with Opeth, maybe, somewhere around there, um, at least that's what I had in my head back then. I haven't listened to this in a really long time, so I'm looking forward to it. But it is super huge and just vast and epic and kind of um, Cascadian black metal in a way. So that's that. Sovereign Nocturnal Belnius. All right, we got tapes, LPs, CDs. Uh, let's get the LPs out of the way. So I found out that Peace Still Records is reissuing Obtained Enslavement's Witchcraft on vinyl. I immediately pre-ordered it and along the way decided to pick up two other goodies from Peaceville. Um, and usually when you pre-order something with something else, they wait to ship it all at once. Um, so I was a little confused and I don't remember when I'll be getting Witchcraft, but it's fine, I don't care. Um, I'm not in a big hurry. I've been in love with that record since 1997. Um, so here's what I got um, ahead of that pre-order arriving. Um to Konga by the almighty Dodan's Guard. Yep, never owned it on vinyl until now. Um, it's funny that they left the original is this the original Malicious logo, or is this another Dodheim's Guard logo? I think this is the uh, Malicious Records logo, and I don't know why, if Peace Bill is reissuing this, they left that on there, but whatever. Um, just black vinyl, there's really nothing fancy about it, except there is um, some really interesting liner notes. Interesting because I am a Dodheim's Guard fanboy, um, and the liner notes are from... Uh, no, not here. Also some pictures. Liner notes from Bakotnik, Aldrin, and Fenris. Uh, stories about the old times, uh, and it's just really neat to kind of step back into the headspace that these teenage Norwegians were in back at that time period, uh, and just kind of get a glimpse into what may have been going on at that time for, the, for those guys. Yeah make me a pile over here okay I also got the white depth this is the new Fluidy album 
Um, they're kind of well known for their Mintage Skull Coma, uh, full length. And also, um, Radical Research just did an episode about these guys, uh, and it really uh, invigorated my love for this band, and I decided to get their new album. It's fun, uh, there's a lot of really cool super dissonant, obtuse, kind of weird, strange shit going on. So if you're not interested in something totally experimental, then fuck right off this album right away. Um, it's it's really, really out there. I would say though, I was telling my buddy, I give it about a seven out of 10 because there's some really great stuff. There's some really bad stuff about it. Um, and weighing it all in all, is like seven out of 10, which is pretty good. It's enjoyable. The good parts are good. The bad parts are just like for forgivable. The thing about Fluidity is, I think, um, something at first might sound kind of off or bad, but over time, the more you listen to a Fluidity album, the bad parts kind of build their charm on you. Um, so yeah. Um, another Norwegian classic, Bud Buenzenda, Written in Waters. Uh, I had to get the reissue of this because I have the original Misanthropy version, but I don't want to wear out. This is my new playing copy of it. I think I might get the CD too, now that I think about it. Um, but uh, saw everybody was getting it, and my last chance to get it was Hell's Headbangers, so decided to pick it up. Amazing record. Uh, my friend, I don't know if I can. No, I probably shouldn't divulge the secret information about a friend of mine doing some interview with the newly reformed Bed Boy's End. Yes. So um, let's do some tapes. I've been getting some tapes, true enough. Um, my buddy Kevin, who's been getting rid of some stuff to me, um, decided to dig into the tapes. So I picked up Morgoth Cursed. Uh, I already have this on CD, but I love this fucking record to death. So of course I'm gonna pick it up. And like the condition that this is in, impeccable. Dude, Kevin, did you ever even play this copy? These tapes are in immaculate condition. Um, I'm just so used to tapes being the, the thing that are thrown around the car in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and whatnot. So to find tapes of this caliber that are in such perfect condition is kind of unthinkable to me. But next, Atrocity with Hallucinations. I got this on CD a couple of weeks ago and waxed super poetic about this album and uh man this is a fucking killer death metal masterpiece that is really underappreciated really technical really fucking strange for its time period it's it's a, one of those good reminders of that death metal wasn't always just scream bloody gore leprosy effigy the forgotten People just kind of seem to forget the fringes of the early death metal records and just be focusing on like 10 or 12 of the, the classics. And, and it's one of those albums that shouldn't be forgotten. Um, next, Disincarnate with Dreams of the Carrion Kind. Um, I wasn't really a fan of this the first time I heard it, but it has probably been a good 15 years since I listened to this album. Uh, and I've always just kind of meant to come around to it again and pick up another copy of it. James Murphy. Aaron Steenthorpe from My Dying Bride does guest vocals on that, if you didn't know. Kevin also sent me a freebie. I haven't checked this out yet. A lot of this stuff I haven't listened to yet, so you'll have to forgive me. Extermination Angel with, uh, I don't know, maybe a self-titled demo or something. And I'm, I'm uh, really dragging my feet here. We got a lot of work ground to cover. So Chromelec with Promo 99. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? This is a three song promotional tape sent out back in 99 uh, and it eventually landed them the deal for their debut EP Vulture Tones to come out on I don't know what label but Chromelik are one of my absolute favorite Swedish bands uh, they can do no wrong this stuff is so fucking ahead of its time amidst these pestilential fears spheres man you gotta check this stuff out um, I got their demo a couple of months ago, and uh, I don't know. So yeah, I finished my Chroma collection, and I'm very happy about it. All right, CDs. Shit ton of CDs. A lot of them I haven't listened to, so we're going to try and just blitzkrieg through these motherfuckers. Um, 
The Bathory, The Return. Total classic. Needed to get a copy of it. Um, never got around to it. The thing is, I buy mostly used CDs, and you do not see Blackmark, and certainly not Bathory very often. So, I don't know. I just Bathory was just kind of a band that was always there. But now that uh, Boss is dead and Corthon is dead, I'm kind of worried that like Blackmark stuff is going to be really hard to come by. So I've been trying to get as much Bathory as I can. So I also picked up Twilight of the Gods from the Dark Descent sale that was going on. Uh, let's see, also got Mork Grinning with Tuzan on Um uh, Swedish black metal masterpiece recorded in New Sound Studios with Dan Swano. So it is right around the time that Storm of the Lights Bane was recorded. So stylistically and production wise, it sounds quite similar to that dissection masterpiece, but it's just not as great. Um, it's got a little bit more melodicism to it, a little less rock and roll. Um, it's definitely up there in the Swedish pantheon of uh, classics. Um, next, we've got Latvian Rifleman by Skyforger. This is a record I've loved for many years on MP3 and never really got around to buying it. Um, decided to finally get it because this is the last Skyforger album that I need. Um, they went to shit after this album, sadly, but uh, this is a killer record. I don't really... These guys are just really on their own. I think if you don't really listen to pagan Viking kind of stuff, it might kind of sound um, like a band that you could lump in with that kind of thing, but they really are truly unique. Um, I really love all their folk instrumentation. Um, in fact, I I think they did a record that was all folk, but it didn't really do it for me. Maybe I should revisit it. I don't know. Um, but they're riff masters. Their stuff is really, really good. Um, and also, I really think the vocals in Skyforge, they're, nobody else does it like them. Okay, let's get into some stuff that I got from Kevin the last time. <coughs> I'm going to turn this up in the hopes that Marvel digs this. All right, next. Um, this band is called Lord, and it's called Hell's Fucking Metal. I wasn't familiar with this band. I just went through Kevin's list and decided this sounds great. Um, I'm really glad I checked it out. This is a really killer record of like blackened thrash, but some songs are really thrashy. Some songs are really black metal-y. I love it. Uh, they're from France and it's good. Weird Truth put it out. Uh, also got The Gathering with Always. This is uh, pre-female vocals phase. So um, I haven't listened to this yet. I need to get on it. Um, I know a lot of people like this band, but I don't know. Um, next, Mad Max, Rolling Thunder. Um, this is another one of those where I was just going through Kevin's list, checking out stuff that sounded good, and this was killer. Um, the thing about it, this is just a kind of a great 80s heavy metal record, but it was pressed on this gold CD. And it sounds fucking amazing. I, I don't know if it was like remastered in 24 bit or something like that or whatever, but it sounds so fucking good. I, I've heard that these gold CDs um, are pretty valuable uh, because their sound quality in them, just lyrics, not really much to look at. The sound quality on them is so good that if an album is like kind of great, um, it's even more great if it sounds amazing on one of these gold CDs. So this is just kind of a German heavy rock kind of metal band from back in the 80s. Uh, really, really tight songwriting, good stuff. Uh, Creator, Pleasure to Kill. Yep. Uh, I used to have this on cassette and I played the shit out of it, uh, got rid of it, and uh, it's back in my collection. You all shot it. should know Pleasure to Kill. Also picked up two full lengths from Occultation from New York, if I'm not mistaken. This is uh, Silence in the Ancestral House and 3 and 7. Uh, this is really good stuff. I'm surprised more people don't talk about Occultation. Um, if you know Negative Plane, uh, guitar player from Negative Plane, and I do think he's super noteworthy. His style is just like one of the most original guitar styles to come along in a long, long time. 
Negative Plane was a really, really interesting band, and I would have liked to hear uh, more of a continuation of that kind of style. So that's kind of where this lies. This is a more doomy kind of like um, female fronted occult rock kind of thing that's, you know, kind of the trend these days. But this is, really has a unique spin on it and it's really, really good. Next, we've got a fucking classic um, that I didn't really realize was so good. I don't know if I'd heard it and just thought whatever or never heard it and shrugged it off. It's pretty nerdy, uh, and the album cover is very nerdy, but Skyclad's um, uh, uh, Wayward Sons of Mother Earth. Yeah. Tip of my tongue there. Fucking killer album, man. Good, good stuff. Uh, I need to pick up the first two Sabat records as well. Apparently, I think Skyclad and the vocalist have re had recently had like a separation of ways, and now there's my version of Skyclad and the without me version of Skyclad. Uh, so I've been in the mood for some really brutal death metal kind of stuff, like I'm usually not. Um, so I, Dark Descent was having a sale, so I kind of went, got a couple of things that I thought might scratch that itch. And that's why I picked up Drawn and Quartered, and I've seen a lot of people talk about this band. Decided to check them out. Proliferation of Disease. I put this on tonight and this is this is a piece of shit. Um, let's move on. Uh, decided to pick up the new Horrendous, a band I didn't pay attention to as far as I remember until now. Uh, this is a new one, Idol on Seasons of Mist. Um, I get the death. It does sound a lot like death. Um, I guess what I real and obituary. People say this sounds like obituary. I'm not really seeing it. Um, it is total death worship. Um, it's not all that original. I wasn't super impressed with it right off the bat. Um, I guess what I, my, fir my first thought through like five or six songs was like, one of the best things about Death was Gene Hoagland's drumming or Sean Reinhardt's drumming for that matter. Uh, and without that kind of just amazing cymbal work and killer patterns and just tons of little candy he's giving you on the drums, Death would have been a lot less enjoyable of a band as far as I'm concerned. Also picked up Disharmonic Orchestra's debut? No, second record. I got their debut exposition prophylax a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is not to be Undimensional Conscious. And this shit is bizarre. Like I was saying earlier with the uh, Atrocity. Um, it's one of those fringe early death metal records and clearly a forgettable record because of the album cover, but I mean, at its time it was probably way too weird for people. Um, the best thing it had going for it probably was that it came out on Nuclear Blast back then in 92, um, but I love it. It's fucking really, really, really weird. Um, I've been kind of like, because of the Radical Research podcast, I've been rethinking a lot of bands that I had in my head were just kind of like, eh, whatever, and revisiting them, like Pyogenesis, um, this harmonic orchestra, Carbonized. Um, you should really check out that podcast. It's super awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad to have two of their albums fall into my lap this year. Um, my buddy Chandler did a video, year end albums, and he chose this one. Baron Alter with Entrenched in the Faults of Earth. Um, decided to give it a spin. Um, it's okay. I don't agree that it's one of the best of last year, but I didn't have a whole lot of opinions on stuff last year. Uh, also picked up Skeptic's Apocalypse by Agent Steel. I've listened to this quite a bit on MP3 and never really came around to finding a copy of it for sale. Ah! This jewel case has got to go. I've never seen a Road Racer Price Killers. It's kind of funny, but killer album, traditional heavy metal. Um, I think I first decided to check out Agent Steel back when Fenris talked about it in one of his videos. All right, moving on, uh, Blue Dows Nord, also because of Chandler. Memory of Atusta 1, Fathers of the Icy Age. This is such a garbage reissue done by Candlelight. This is so bad. The artwork on this is just shite. Um, the lyrics are fucking cut off. The change the band logo and cut it off. God 
I can't believe this is such an abomination. Um, probably should have gone for a different version of it, but cheap ass me decided to pick this up for uh, a good bargain or whatever. Um, so, I also decided to pick up this masterpiece. Born in their club of gore with piano knights. Um, this is not metal. First off, this came out on Ipecac, which you might be familiar with if you like some of the more experimental kind of stuff. That's Mike Patton's label. This is one of the most dreamy, slow, soothing, atmospheric albums I've ever heard. In fact, I don't. It almost isn't an album to me. It's like a medicinal thing. Uh, if I'm ever stressed out or angry or I just need to put a big hot towel on my head and just go to sleep for about 10 minutes, this album soothes me down, calms me down, and just drains everything out of me and gets me back to where I need to be. I've recommended it to so many people who want something to do that for them and this album is complete and total transcendent therapy man piano nights um it's like you could say it's like doom jazz in a way because it's slow and it's kind of jazzy it's played on jazz instruments but i wouldn't say there's really much of a semblance of jazz going on um it's so slow that it does come across as ambient music but there's milky saxophone tones and cymbals and drums and horns and things like that but it is just so relaxing and soothing that it's I, I had to pick it up next we've got Borker with Amber now listen up guys this is fucking amazing I've had the chance to spin this once so far it is so fucking good I hope this gets reissued on vinyl or maybe CD again but um, the label Pest Productions who put this out said this is strictly limited to 300 copies and will never be reissued again so um, I guess the idea with this is if you can't already tell us that this is a total tribute to early Druk uh, and it sounds exactly like Forgotten Legends and Autumn Aurora that perfect era of Druk uh, it is so fucking amazing. Those harmonies going on are just spot fucking on. Um, it's it's not like I had this huge, mournful, overwhelming need for more Druk in my collection, but it's just it's fucking amazing. Borker with Amber. Um, next, we picked up Gorephobia with apocalyptic necromancy. I, you know, I just picked this up on the cheap because I wanted some death metal, basically. Dark Descent put this out in 2016, um, and I've just kind of always meant to pick up some Gorophobia, so we will see about that. Last but not least, picked up Eternal Solstice. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Remnants of Immortality, also on Dark Descent. I talked about these guys um, in my graveyard video about a month ago or so. Uh, and this is their more recent full length. I, I think they went like 95 to 2015, I think, was the span of time between that album and this one. So, haven't spun it yet, so I can't say much about it. But, um, thanks for watching. We will see you next time.